afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. It's the fourth Wednesday of the month, and that means it's time for our Bird Notes program. Joining us, as always, is bird expert and conservation biologist for Audubon, Vermont, Mark Labar. Thanks for coming out of the field uh, and coming in. Always great to be here. <laughs> it's that time of the year where I'm inside a little bit more than out. Yeah. 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 So uh, the National Audubon Society just released, um, or recently, a new climate study called Survival by Degrees. So fill us in a little bit about that study. Yeah, so this is a big thing. It, it was released earlier this month. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, it's a follow-up to um, an earlier climate study that was done in 2014 by Audubon and how climate change impacts birds. And this one is a a study that basically focuses on about 604 North American species. Um, data sources for this, uh, there are 70 different data sources, 140 million data points by both mm. scientists and by community scientists. And it tries to take all of this information and model what will be the responses, the range responses, where birds are to climate change at uh, an increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius and an increase at 3%, 3 percent, wow. 3 degrees Celsius. Okay. And so all of this stuff, it, it, you know, if you go to the National Audubon Society webpage, you can go right on there, click about the study, uh, learn about the different pieces. Um, you know, some of the, um, you know, here's a, one of the range maps to, to show you. Uh, the red is uh, where a species will be lost, the yellow is oh. where a species uh, will move into. Uh, so these shifts don't necessarily mean that the birds are going to uh, go extinct, but that they may just shift and we may see changes along those right. lines. And, and as they move north, there may be the habitat they need and there may not be. be cor that's correct. Right? Right, so some species are squeezed uh, because of that, lo you know, loss of habitat, other species just kind of adjust and move a little bit further north, and many of them move out of Vermont. Wow. O okay. So t let's talk about Vermont species okay. and how they might be affected by yep. climate change. So the first example is uh, the common loon, right? This is a, a, a bird that has done great. Um, here's our uh, the webpage site, um, if folks want to look at that and the... Uh, right, so you can go to the Audubon. You can go to the Audubon Dr. page yeah. and you can see the, the web link there. Wow. Uh, but getting back to the loon, you know, we've done a lot of great things here in Vermont to re bring the loon back to Vermont. Right. And um, its current range in the, you know, in North America is, uh, includes Vermont and, uh, and other parts of the northern tier sure. of the United States. So what we'll see in the maps and how that range changes is that at 1.5 degrees, uh, the common loon still may be present in Vermont. Uh, but then as we get to that 3%, here's our loon. Right. Um, you know, classic, um, you know, this year's they're report. So we had um, loons all over the place in Vermont. They're doing really well. But the temperature rises one degree, and we have our first map here, right. and we so, see what happens. So that 1.5 degree, this is the actual current range, and that's where okay. the yellow is. Okay. So the next map is that 1.5 degree shift, and you can wow. kind of see that things start to move around, and we begin to see the birds uh, shift further north. And then that 3% um, 3 degree mark, um, we kind of lose the... Um, Here's the, oh, here's the 1.5 degree. And you can see oh. the common, I mean, the common loon, uh, that red indicates where it'll be lose. And then with the three degrees, these birds will move completely out of the state of Vermont. Wow. So we have the possibility over the course of the century uh, to do, um, to lose that particular species. Now there's room for them up north, um, but uh, as a Vermont breeding species, we might not see them. Right. Wow, that's just, re that's really striking. Um, and, and are there species um, outside of Vermont? What, what are some other ones that you're concerned about? So, you know, another example is the bobolink. And oh, this is a species, uh, this is the bobolink. Again, another uh, species of conservation concern. Uh, it's a species of grasslands, and they are, uh, we've been working to keep them around across North America. 
Um, and again, as we uh, get to you know, take a look at their current range, we can see that uh, in that yellow, that it includes Vermont and a lot of uh, the northern tier states like the Loon and up into Canada. And then as we start looking at uh, 1.5 degrees over the course of the century, you can see that the bobolink leaves Vermont and is really now a Canadian species. And then at three degrees, you can see wow. that we've almost completely lost the bobolink. Uh, that light blue area is kind of the last remaining areas where the bobolink might um, find some refuge. It was interesting in these maps how the loon, it looked like they could move into Alaska and these northern areas, but the bobolink, because it needs grasslands and other habitat, Correct. their habitat won't, won't really, it doesn't exist further, right. further north. And there's a lot of different impacts uh, on these that Audubon considered, different threats uh, from extreme weather, uh, sea level rise, urbanization, those were all calculated in this as well as far as how things uh, threaten are threatened. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and the Northeast actually potentially has um, some of the higher probabilities to lose um, more species. And, and that's just because of these variables yes, are, are and more the, changeable here. Yes, the threats here. we have a more, uh, the way the modeling was done, the Northeast seems to have a higher number of these threats acting upon our bird species here. Wow, and so are there parts of Vermont that will see more change than others? Yeah, so probably the biggest areas uh, that we'll see will be our boreal forest in the Northeast Kingdom mm -hmm. and our mountain ridge tops. Um, the ridge tops, Bicknell's thrush, you know, as, as global warming, those little islands will disappear. And in the boreal mm -hmm. forest, where we have species like the boreal chickadee, which currently mm -hmm. inhabits uh, portions of the Northeast Kingdom, um, that species will, along with a couple of other species, probably move out of the, um, out this of, just move at 1.5 degrees change, yeah. so not even three S degrees. So do we have a time frame on, on, on all of this, or does it depend on how well we do to um, you know, try to keep climate change at bay? So that's the big thing, is to try to keep it down to that 1.5 uh, degree change, because about 170 species um, will move off that vulnerable species list if we can keep it there. The time frame for a lot of this modeling is over the course of the, you know, the next century. Okay. So, you know, again, depending on the speed of that, uh, the impacts could be greater or, you know, far less. As yeah, well. they, they were saying at the website something like two thirds of the species yes, like are potentially correct. at risk. Yep. So, of course, there's lots of things we can do. Lots of what people have been hearing out there. Everything from renewable energies to small things at home like you know, keeping your house insulated and changing your light bulbs and reducing your carbon footprint. Um, those are all things that hopefully we can use to, um, you know, limit that uh, keep, climate change. Keep our change. birds. Keep our birds, yeah. So I, I imagine that these bird counts that people do are helping with this data. That's all part of this data? Yeah, so a lot of the information comes from community scientists that are entering data into eBird, Christmas bird count data, scientific journals, scientific reports. Um, so all of those were included in order to get the best uh, modeling components that we could out there. So interesting. So I even um, you're saying that some other birds that we don't have might be in this Correct. Range. So, so one bird that, you know, is interesting to look at, which is the wood thrush. And that's a bird that we currently have. Um, and potentially we could be uh, kind of the last refuge of... Um, you know, this species in its, within its range. Oh. And uh, this, and you'll see that uh, the current range of the wood thrush right now is pretty extensive. Right. You know, it's across most of the northeastern corner of uh, Vermont, I mean of the United States. But then as we go to that um, three degree mark, um, you'll see that many of its, a lot of its range to the, um, to the west is lost, but right. Vermont still is a stronghold for that species. Right. So again, we have to make sure that our, um, our the habitats that are here, our forests, our grasslands, our shrublands, are uh, able are to are maintained for 
um, these species as time progresses. Interesting, that whole swath around the, the Mississippi yep. Valley yep. looked like... It just goes away. Go, go, goes away for them. That's correct. Um, so other conclusions about this study that we need to understand? So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's one more thing as far as uh, climate change and just that whole idea that, you know, not only is climate change going to impact us as um, as humans. As humans. Well, but we make it longer than the birds. <laughs> right, exactly. It, you know, it's the canary in the coal mine. Yeah. You know, it's sure. a lot of these species and a lot of the changes that are going to happen are going to um, happen, you know, to birds as well. And we're going to see those changes. So we really need to work as hard as we can to keep that climate change. We know it's happening, but to kind of rein it in. Uh, so that we can benefit and birds can benefit too. And birds too. can too. Yeah. Uh, wow, 600 some odd species. It's really a stunning yep. report. Yep. Yep. And um, people can uh, can go to the the website at, at, at Audubon yep. or or, or Audub yours. Yep, either the our Audubon Vermont website vt.audubon.org or to uh, the National Audubon website, and uh, you can Google that or bring that up. Right, so you can see you can see this report on, on your own, And you can put in stunning. different species, and you can see their range changes, and get an idea uh, how that might impact Vermont and across North America. Yeah, fantastic. Um, it, it was interesting that the, the red is gone, and then there are little green areas where this is really good, and this, I mean, the band, it's very interesting. Once you understand those yep. maps, yep. it's really pretty And profound. it's pretty detailed. And, you know, Vermont may see some birds that it normally doesn't see as things shift. You right. know, some of these southern species, hooded warblers, Kentucky uh, yeah. warblers, you know, these things might be showing up in our forests as uh -huh. well, in our shrublands, so... Uh, there's lots of changes going on. Okay, so if you have any bird-related questions, you can pass them along to Mark um, at the address that's on your screen. There it is. Um, his email address is mlabar at audubon.org. Uh, so send Mark your questions and pictures, and uh, we'll have some more answers and interesting things to talk about next time All on right. Bird Notes. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Mark. Yep. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Uh -huh.